in the Aboriginal world, uh, the, there is a, an idea that from birth until death, uh, we are here to learn the ancestral law and to practice that law in order to look after people and places and have respect for what the ancestors left us. That is putting it in a, in a highly summarised version. Now, the way that it's expressed in different cultures, one learns very slowly throughout life. You realise things years after having attended a ceremony because you've attended another ceremony and suddenly you see the connections and you make, you make sense of it very gradually and you, be, you learn deeper and deeper meanings. So there's also the idea that people uh, are, are, are made up of ancestral substance that comes from the ancestral past and we go back to it when we die. In each uh, country, there are places with huge significance and it's where there are ancestral beings or uh, where ancestral beings did something extraordinary. And so these places are celebrated in songs and dances and designs. The designs could be in rock art or the painted on the body. People paint them in art, various kinds of artworks. They make sculptures. You know, you heard today from Brian Gardericha that not only is he multilingual, he speaks a number, of, well, he speaks, he talked about two languages. He actually hears many more. He also spoke about everyday language and then what he called academic language, uh, by which he means the, special, the ancestral language. Every uh, Aboriginal person engaged in that grand task that both Damien and Brian have taken on of protecting uh, the, their inheritance. I always see this uh, problem of, of, of their message being lost in translation. I can see how non-Indigenous people just don't get it. And, and it's a shame because what they're saying is very important. Now, it might be because they don't have the uh, understanding of English in particular terms that could be used and the ways that you could use the English language uh, to, to convey what they mean, or it could be that the concepts, and this is more often the case, the concepts just don't exist in English. We have a responsibility, all of us, to preserve human cultures. Um, I think we have a, somewhere between seven and 9,000 human languages, most of which are threatened, highly at risk, uh, and most of them won't survive the next 50 years. And it is the same with cultures. All of those languages come from human cultures. Not only do you lose people who can speak languages, but you lose all of that knowledge that those people had as a result of speaking a, a language that you might say was created in a place amongst a particular group of people over a very long period of time and globalization and economic development threaten that legacy, that human legacy. It's very evident in Australia. Australia has the highest rate of linguistic loss in the world. So we all have a responsibility to do what we can to preserve human cultures and find a way to live sustainably that does not wipe out those human cultures. We have a lot of challenges. The climate crisis is one of them but it is forcing us to rethink how we live on this planet. But I want ministers of culture to think creatively about how to save human cultures. I want Aboriginal cultures uh, to be available to my great, 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 great grandchildren.